My name is Alex Dorgen. I'm an Ansible Solution Specialist, and I'm going to be walking through event-driven Ansible and the event-driven Ansible controller that became generally available as part of the Ansible Automation Platform 2.4 release. So what is event-driven Ansible and what can it provide? So I look at event-driven Ansible as a new way to launch automation. So in the past, really the only ways to launch automation were directly through the UI or through an API call that directly knew how to connect to automation controller. So there are certainly limitations where not every tool could actually connect correctly or could pass the correct variables that I needed to launch the automation that mattered to me. So now with event-driven Ansible, I can have monitoring and ticket solutions talk to event-driven Ansible and then have those rules set up to talk to the exact playbook that I need with the exact variables passed. I could also use something like a chat program to have a webhook into event-driven Ansible that can launch automation. So think of ways to better enable my help desk to launch automation without really needing to know anything about Ansible, APIs, or any sort of other system. All of that can integrate directly with event-driven Ansible, which would then call a job template inside controller itself. So this can significantly reduce SLAs. So now as soon as a monitoring event happens or a ticket's created, I can have that automatically trigger automation, which means that dead time is gone. So I can always leverage the expertise that exists for Linux or Windows or that particular issue because they're the ones that have created that playbook. They're the ones that have created the rule book, which tells me exactly how to respond to an event that's been created. So what sort of use cases can I do with this? It really is as extensive as you want it to be. I've been asked a lot of, can this tool integrate with it? Can that tool integrate it? What can I do with it? It really is as extensive as Ansible itself is. So obviously there are some out of the box source plugins that exist, but there's also a generic webhook. So really anything that can provide a webhook into event driven Ansible can use that to trigger automation. So think of simple troubleshooting. Hey, this infrastructure issue came in. Maybe it's as simple as the monitoring solution isn't running. I need to restart it or to much more complicated situations where I could actually have a trigger for a disaster recovery event that launches a full disaster recovery automation workflow. So it gives you a ton of capability as I look into what I want to use as a trigger and what I want to automate against, but I can certainly start simple. Maybe I just want to notify someone via Slack or want to generate a log set that updates a ticket. I could use event-driven Ansible for that. So what is this rule book that I talked about? A rule book is just the new way to define what my sources are and how I want to respond to them. So in this case, I could be using something like Alert Manager, listening to a specific port. And then this is the rule that I'm looking for. So if this particular job comes in and it's the status of firing, in this case, all I'm going to do is a debug, which will display that output. This is a great first rule book to write because I can see what that API response looks like and then use that to tailor exactly how I want to respond to different events. Um, for this, as I integrate this in with Automation Controller, I'll actually use the Run Job Template action, and that will specifically connect it to Automation Controller to run the existing jobs, credentials, and playbooks that I've already created. So let's look into how I can set up this EDA controller and how that will integrate in with Automation Controller to actually run jobs. So I have an installed EDA controller. I have it up and running, but I haven't actually configured it yet to talk to Automation Controller or any rule books or anything like that set up. So I'm gonna go through the initial process of logging in. And the first thing and easiest thing for me to do is to actually set up a token back to Automation Controller so I can run the job templates that I wanna run on activation. So I'm going to go into user details, go to controller tokens and create a controller token. In this case, I'll just call it, you know, Shadow Man controller. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log into my automation controller. In this case, I have a special user that I want to use. So any job that's run will run as my EDA user. I've already set up the role based access control to only be able to launch three jobs because that's part of what I want to do. And I've also already set up an application in this case for EDA. So OAuth2 can be provided through that. So all I need to do now is as this user, create a new token. In this case, I will use that EDA token and I want it to have right scope. And I'm just going to copy that token and paste it into my automation controller. So just like that, that initial setup is done. Out of the box, it already provides a decision environment and a credential to reach my private automation hub. So all that's are available. Decision environments are essentially the same as execution environments, but have the source plugins as well as Ansible rulebook, which is needed for this all to work. 
the next thing I'll do is actually set up my project. So I have a Git repo that already has this capability set up. So I'll call it Shadow Man Rulebooks, Git, and I'll set this up to link with my uh, GitHub. So obviously I already have that set up with, with my different rulebooks. Key thing to remember, and I didn't realize this when I started, is it does need the rulebook themselves to live in a specific folder. Conveniently, rulebooks off the root is good enough. So you can just provide that in there. And obviously I could set a credential if I had a private repository. In my case, I don't. So I'm just gonna click create. You'll see it running. This is where it would give you that error if for some reason it couldn't import those rule books because it's not in the correct folder. But in my case, it should run fine and I should get access to all those playbooks. And I can see that the hash, obviously I know already matches the hash that I have. The only other step that I need to do is actually set up the rule book activations. So this is very similar to a job template in that this basically defines what rule books I wanna leverage and what I wanna call this. So I could just say, you know, I could have a chat bot for patching, which is one of the things I'll walk through in a minute using that Shadow Man rulebook and conveniently using my chatbot patch rulebook. And I have one decision environment. And honestly, I want this to always restart if something goes wrong. So I'll create that rulebook activation. I want to create a second one, in my case, for um, Prometheus. So I have Prometheus node exporter running. Um, and right now I just have a single rulebook that will restart node exporter if it determines that it's down. So if I get an alert from the alert manager that says it's down, I can restart that. Obviously, because of Ansible and how it works, I could always add in additional rules later on, but for now, that's all I've got. So I can see that I've got these three rules running. It shows me conveniently how many rules are in there that it's keeping track of. You know, if I refresh this page, it'll tell me that there's one rule in there. It's never fired, it's never been restart. I can see that it's running. So I can see all the information that's in here. And now I wanna actually activate it. So because I've got job set up to turn off um, Prometheus node export, I'm actually going to switch users to my myself and i'm going to stop prometheus node exporter and that will obviously be able to trigger our automation in this case i'm going to pick one vm to stop it on because i don't need to stop it on at all so i'll stop it on one of my controller hosts and that will go through the process because i have prometheus already monitoring itself as well as the vm and then i'm also monitoring my controller metrics and then my two controller hosts so in this case this will show up as being down which then can talk to alert manager. So I have set up on the alert manager side, the configuration to reach out to event-driven Ansible. So it's reaching out to my event-driven Ansible to a specific port. And why is that port in there? Why does that matter? So that actually matches my rule book. So I have a rule book that's up specifically looking for alert manager on port 8,000. So that's exactly what alert manager will reach out to. And then I have one rule set up to monitor for the condition of the alert being exported or down and the status of firing. If that is the case, then it will run a single job template that will basically run my automated remediation to create a ServiceNow incident, post a message in my chat, remediate the issue, and then post the remediation in the chat as well as ServiceNow for the ticket. So all of that is handled by a single job template for me. But the beauty of this is I set up one integration in Alert Manager and then the rest, as I get more comfortable and build out more remediation playbooks, I can go through the process of adding those in. So maybe I am ready for high CPU usage. I can just create that additional role and, and continue on. So I don't have to make updates back to Alert Manager at all. I can just make those changes in the rule books. It, again, makes that process much, much easier to do. So obviously, as I see this, I can probably refresh and this may already be down and it may already be resolved. So fortunately, it is already down. So once that alert triggers, it will trigger in here. And then I can see in alert manager that an alert has happened. So I can see that it is down. And then I can also go into alert manager itself. So if I go into the rule book activations and click node exported down, I can go into the history. And if I scroll down, I can see that it actually did trigger. And I can see all the information that got provided. So the first time I ran this, I honestly just ran a debug so I could see all the JSON that gets put out. But that triggered a job and automation controller, which I can see ran. So this is that job, conveniently EDA automated response exporter down. Went through the process of creating that ServiceNow ticket, displayed the incident number, updated my Mattermost channel, restarted the service, closed out the ticket, and then also again updated Mattermost. So I can see in here, here's the alert that it's down, here's the alert that it's restored, and in ServiceNow, if I go to all. I can see that 10142. So conveniently, the entire process was automated from 
the immediate from detection to actually initiating the automation to creating the ticket to the resolution to updating and closing out the ticket. The entire process was automated, leveraging in this case, event-driven Ansible. What else can I integrate with event-driven Ansible? It could really be as simple as a chatbot. So I could actually use the same chat program and maybe I wanna patch on my Windows servers for whatever reason. So I have a external webhook set up specifically monitoring for either patch Windows or patch RHEL. And when I launch this, that will also trigger automation. So maybe I don't wanna look in event-driven Ansible, I wanna see in controller. I can see that my patch Windows job has started. So all of this, again, is based on those rulebook activations. In this case, I have a chatbot running, specifically a webhook. So again, any generic API that can be called can call into this webhook, and I'm looking for specific parts of that payload so that the channel name is town square, the trigger word is patch rel, and then I've got one for patch windows. So think of a case where you've got, you know, a help desk that monitors a chat and they just want to be able to run simple jobs. I could trigger off of certain words that they type in there to run automation. They don't need to know anything about the playbook, about controller, about the credentials that are stored in there, the job templates. This handles that entire process for them where they can just run it. And if I'm curious afterwards, well, I want to verify that the rules, you know, successfully completed. So I can see, obviously I deleted these from previous usages, but I can see this is the one that ran just a moment ago. I can see that it was successful and maybe I want to see the result of what happened. All that's in here. So it directly links into the exact job template that was run for that job. And this is why I set up as the EDA user. So I can see that it was launched by them and I can keep track of anything that was launched by event-driven Ansible. So again, this is an easier way to provide new paths to actually launch automation. So in this case, I did something as simple as restart node exporter and patching, but really the possibilities are endless. So take time to think about how you wanna run your automation and what triggers you may wanna leverage. So what can you do next? Honestly, the best place to start looking through some of the blogs to see examples of really what I can do. Um, some people have created custom source plugins, such as one to ping certain tables in ServiceNow, so I don't even need to set up anything on the ServiceNow side to reach out to Ansible. I also add in just all blogs on event-driven Ansible because there are some that walk through using Red Hat Insights as a driver, and I also include the Ansible rulebook documentation so you can figure out how to set some of those pieces up. I'll also include in the description below different ways and some of the playbooks that I've done around event-driven Ansible. So there really is a large variety of different things that you can do for event-driven Ansible. The, really, it comes down to what do you want to trigger off of and then how do you want to remediate it? It doesn't need to solve the entire problem day one. It can be as simple as take one event, notify a chat, or grab a log set, and then go from there. Use the similar concept of every other Ansible playbook that you've done. Start simple and grow. So I hope this was a helpful way to learn a little bit more about event-driven Ansible and event-driven Ansible controller. Please let me know if you have any questions.